because it can get a little bit overwhelming and messy when you have a lot of sounds in a big Avid Live set you're using for performance then this might be a little bit overwhelming on what's happening and what sound are you actually triggering currently. Would it be nice to have a big drum rack display of the current drum rack you are playing? Possible now via Max for Life and you can see even uh, when you are hitting your sounds or via your MIDI controller or via your eDRAM kit or via uh, MIDI clips it will light up the different fields with the different sounds here so you have this um, big pop-up display which you can open up you can change the size you can have this sitting on a second screen if needed and you can save the position and when you open up this Ableton Live set it will open in this position here. Cool! So how to set this up? Maybe first show you, I will show you that you can change the background color so if you want to customize this and have some different colors for the uh, text and for the background you can pick those down below here at in the color section you can maybe let's make it like this like it was in the beginning and then you need to map it to a drum rack um, so this is pretty easy so um, if you just hit map and then you need to select the drum rack, for example, um, the on and off button here, and it needs to be from the actual drum rack, not from the nested um, effect control or instrument rack here. So you need to touch this, and then you can see it's map now, it will display the name, and you need to hit T once, trigger that connection once. Um, to make sure this is connected now and it will display the name in the pop-up window of the current drum rack here as well. I will show you in a second how you can connect more drum racks and then cycle through those or automate the selection of which drum rack should be displayed. Okay, but first this is a simple connection and it will display the colors here of the chains. So um, if you open up the chain view inside the drum rack you can uh, change the colors here so maybe let's give them all one color for example this one here um, I re-trigger the connection and you can see those different color coding here is being translated to the drum rack display if I now trigger those they will light up as well as soon as you have notes path through being um, activated and this way you can always see like what kind and in what way your current drum rack um, is being uh, filled with drum sounds on those different pads here. Obviously I um, set this to 16 MIDI notes only and you can change the starting point. So starting point would mean what is the lowest note of the um, lowest pad you want to start off with and then the next 15 ones uh, in total 16 ones will be displayed so if we for example set this a little bit higher starting at E1 you can see now that the view would be this view here and if we can move this up one if we just move this up one row here you can see uh, you have to hit command for that that it will start here and those fields now are being empty and obviously as they are empty no color coding is applied here it will just stay on the former color coding if you want this to be different you need to create um, chains here and set those to the according note so you need to have the in and out section and then the E2 for example just showing you the whole process here if I can slide down if oh, my trackpad let me slide down the E2 to the E2 where is it here it is and now give it a color coding maybe something like this and give it a name empty maybe and then we can hit the T button here again and you can see now this is taking this over. So you can highly customize your drum racks, colors your drum racks display with this. Again, you can make this to the size you like. This would be the smallest 
and the biggest is <laughs> really big. Okay, cool. So let's connect a few drum kits here. Let's set this back to C1 because that's usually the one everyone is using for custom kits here as well or for um, preset kits here. C1 is usually the starting points and obviously this needs to be set to or is set to C1 per default. Okay, so let's um, map another kit and just so you know, I could have um, obviously kits anywhere. So if I want to map a kit and let's fold this down for a second, if I just take a kit here, pass this over and now I go to my device and I map the second kit here. I go to the kit, I just uh, touch the on and off button once and then I can see in my device here the second slot is this kit now and if I now open this drum rack display view here I hit T once you can see it's now taking over those colors and lighting up accordingly to the pads you're playing now here I'm still activated on those first one here that's why you hear the sounds from the first one which is um, and should be managed separately. So just um, for example, let's put those into one uh, rack here or let's group this rack here and just have multiple drum kits in here. Let's create a new chain and let's drag this in here. We need to redo the connection. So you just hit X for um, getting rid of a connection and let's touch the on and off button here again. And we can see now it's being now reconnected to this kit here. As we only have two kits currently, we can set the number of drum racks to two. And now we could actually cycle through those two different drum kits here via this button cycle select drum racks or we could use the automate kit selection here. This is great for um, having this automated. So if you play live, you obviously first want to make sure that you have set up your MIDI connections here via your MIDI drum controller for triggering sounds. And then you would look into at which point which drum rack should be displayed in your big drum rack display and view device here. So the automation would work for example like this. You create a MIDI clip and you have the automate kit selection parameter here and now you could set up a MIDI clip to change between those or trigger them accordingly and we can see now here the display is changing because I select a different kit or the different kit and it's being um, cycling now at the moment just through two different kits here number one and number two and for showing purposes they are now on the same track if you have a um, set it would be probably more like this and you would use this track for playing and this track here for only automating the view and for passing through the midi notes so let's keep it like this maybe and we can see now we still have the notes being played and now if we um, would automate the playing kits here having a kit selection via the chain selection for example that's for a different video but just so you understand those are now being on one track being automated to play the right sound and on one track being automated to view and to display the right sound names in here. Cool. There are a few more things. Actually, if you want to MIDI map or key map your selection and don't want this to be automated, you can do this via your T button here. So for example, if I um, get rid of the automation here and if I just hit the one now, it will display my first kit I mapped. If I hit two now, it will display my second kit here because I set up key mappings here. This can be done via MIDI obviously as well for the MIDI. Um, it's a little bit tricky because if you map a MIDI button to a button in a Max for Live device it will stay on. So if we do this really quick like this here for example you can see if I hit this once it will stay on and you have to hit it twice. That's why there is a button map, map mode 
um, being implemented here too momentary so it would switch off automatically or the button wouldn't stay on and you don't have to hit it twice. You can do something here via direct MIDI in as well. So if you route your MIDI controller in here and you want this to select and being triggered via a MIDI node and not via the native MIDI mapping here. You can set this up here as well. So you would send your controller's MIDI node directly into here to trigger the selection of the first one or the second one in this case. And you could do the same for this part here and you can still hear a sound because the MIDI is being passed through, which is great. So now if we would have two kits or if we would have 10, up to 10 kits being mapped up, it would go one step up, one step up, one step up and starting at the first one again, depending to the number you've set in here. So this is quite nice for um, being able to quickly maybe select different kits on the fly without having to go into um, this here and just making sure um, but then you would need to set up the kit selection and the sound selection here as well because this is only representing the visual aspect here it's not um, taking care of your sound selection it's just something you need to take care of and you need to automate yourself. Okay, make sure you have the notes passed through on. If that's off, no um, blinking will happen if you have this being turned on. You can see that the fields you are currently playing are blinking and this way you get some even more better visual control of what you're actually playing here because it can get a little bit overwhelming and messy when you have a lot of sounds in a big live Ableton Live set um, you're using for performance then this might be a little bit overwhelming on what's happening and what sound are you actually triggering, triggering currently. Cool, um, you can get this device. This is a Max for Live device. If you follow the link in the video description below, this means it's a Max for Life device. You will need Max for Life to make use of this where Max for Life is included in Ableton Life Suite or can be bought as an add-on towards Ableton Life Standard. If you don't have Max for Life, you can't you make use of Max for Life devices. Okay, this will work in Ableton Live 10, 11 and 12. Have fun checking it out and take care. Bye-bye.